So, can everyone in the room hear me? Yeah. Okay, and then everyone on Zoom, can you also hear me as well? Okay, good. I'm going to hide y'all so you're not on the on the big board for everyone just yet. Oops. Um, all right, so um, welcome. You made it to the Car Center's Argue Interest Meeting. Uh, thank you for coming. We're going to talk about um, what the heck the Car Center for Ethics is. What that the car deal is and how you can get involved. Um, and there are going to be a few people speaking, and we'll have time uh, for questions at the end. So we also have some students who are already involved with the program here who can answer your questions as well. Um, but my name is Sally Moore. I'm the director of undergrad programming. So um, I work with undergrads on all the stuff that we do, which I'll go into a little bit more in a minute. Um, but yeah, that's a little bit about me. And so I'm going to invite um, Michael Vasquez up and he's going to talk about, we're going to zoom out just a little bit um, and talk about the philosophy department in general, uh, because that's where we are right now. Thanks, Sally. Um, am I lined up properly? Ash, can you confirm? Okay, cool. Um, so I'm Michael. I teach in the philosophy department, um, as Sally said. I just want to say something by way of introduction about the philosophy department as a whole before we focus uh, in on Can you hear me now? Yes. That was such an appropriate Zoom moment. Okay. Um, <laughs> so philosopher has asked questions like, uh, what's the nature of reality? How do we know? Uh, is there a God? Do we have free will? What's the best way to arrange ourselves politically? What's the nature of a good human life? Those are the kinds of questions philosophers ask. Um, what's interesting and what I like to tell people about what's kind of distinctive about philosophy as opposed to maybe other disciplines um, is that it's inescapable. If you're a human being, which I think you all are, and if you've been socialized uh, to live and navigate in a human world, uh, you've either encountered or thought about or presupposed the answers to philosophical questions. Um, so we've all, in some sense, engaged in philosophy already. And the cool thing about being at a place like UNC, where we have a really awesome philosophy department, is that you can kind of refine and hone that skill, just like any other skill, just because you've got a little bit of it, uh, doesn't mean you can't improve. So that's what philosophy is all about. It's about applying reason and clear thinking to really kind of foundational perennial questions. Um, that's kind of methodologically what we're up to. There's lots of ways to get involved while you're here at UNC. Uh, kind of think of it on a scale. Um, you can attend colloquia and talks. So we have regular talks. They're on the UNC philosophy website advertised when and where they're happening. There's one in particular I want to draw your attention to that's philosophy in 15 minutes on September 10th at 3 p.m. in Girard Hall. There's gonna be talks by undergraduates, graduate students and faculty, really short and accessible, kind of a series of 15 minute talks or so. Um, you can also get a little bit more involved. You can take classes, even if you're not a philosophy major, uh, that do fulfill gen eds and distribution requirements. We've got really cool classes for this fall, for example, on everything from consciousness, environmental ethics, the meaninglessness of life, uh, philosophy of law, you name it. Uh, lots of really interesting classes you can get involved with. If you're still shopping around, I encourage you, check it out. Go to the philosophy department website and look what's on offer. There's a major, there's a minor, and there's an honors thesis kind of opportunity for those who pursue that course of study. So there's lots of reasons to study philosophy. If those questions resonated with you at all, that's valuable and fun and rewarding in its own sake. Um, philosophy majors also uh, regularly and typically fare better than their peers on graduate entrance exams. So if you're thinking about taking the LSAT, the GRE, the GMAT, the MCAT, across the board, philosophy majors do well. Uh, not surprising given the kind of virtues and habits of mind that are involved with asking these questions. Um, so graduate schools are looking for that kind of thing. Employers are looking for that kind of thing. So um, I'll leave it at that and hand it back over and allow things to kind of transition now back to the part So thanks, everybody. Good to meet you. Again, that was Michael Vasquez. He um, teaches in the philosophy department. He's also our outreach director at the Parr Center for Ethics. So we've talked about the philosophy department where we are. We're going to zoom in just a tad and talk about the Parr Center for Ethics, which is hopefully why 
while I'm here. And we're gonna let our um, director, Professor Stroud, introduce the PAR Center, give you all a little bit of information about what we do um, on a larger scale. So I will mute myself and Sarah, you can go ahead. Thanks, Sally, and welcome everyone. Um, it's, it's great to see you, um, if only virtually, uh, live from my, from my house. Um, very happy that you're all coming to check out the PAR Center and in particular our undergraduate programs. So um, let me just take a minute to tell you what the PAR Center is. A lot of people haven't heard about it, um, but we're, we're trying to change that. Um, it's been around for about 15 years. Um, it is the only center on campus that specializes in all aspects of ethics, all kinds of ethical questions as they arise across all fields of study, fields of endeavor. Um, we are Carolina's focal point for discussions of ethics. Um, we are a very student-centered and also public-facing center. So um, what you're going to learn tonight about the undergraduate program is a big part of what we're about. Um, and we also run uh, programs out in the community, um, bringing ethical thought and discussion to people beyond uh, Carolina's campus. So you're going to hear more about that in the form of um, the National High School Ethics Bowl. And as Sally mentioned, we uh, also run an outreach program, which visits everything from kindergartners to um, retirement communities to lead uh, stimulating discussions. So we're a very busy place. Um, we, in addition to those things, have a speaker series. So Michael had mentioned that there are talks put on by the philosophy department, which is kind of like our parent unit, um, even though we have a mission to serve the whole campus. Um, but we at the PAR Center also put on our own talks, all of which focus on one or another aspect of ethics. So we're going to have at least half a dozen talks this year um, on topics ranging from tree equity, uh, that is, you might not have thought of it, but trees are actually an equity issue, to um, surveillance and data privacy, um, to addiction, um, we have a we always have a wide range of topics, and we bring in renowned scholars and practitioners to talk to you all about it. So that's the Par Center. We are located on the second floor of Caldwell, so just one level up from where you are now. We're a very inviting place for students. Feel free to stop by. Uh, but maybe our biggest strength, which you'll discover if you if you hang around um, long enough to learn this, is we have just an amazing group of undergraduates um, who choose to spend time with us um, and who follow either our ethics recruits program, our ethics fellows, or, and this is just the second year that this has been possible, our ethics scholar program, which is a sort of official university certification that you've done in-depth work in ethics uh, and that is recorded on your transcript. So it's a great bunch of people um, discussing and doing activities around a really interesting set of issues. And you are the ones that make all of this tick. So thank you for coming to learn more and um, hope your interest is piqued. Thank you all and thanks, Sally. All right, we were clapping, I don't, we were muted. So thank you. <laughs> um, all right, so next, um, we're gonna hear from another one of my fabulous colleagues. Um, we're gonna hear from Alex Richardson and the National High School Ethics Bowl. Um, all these things are important because these are parts of the center that you can get involved with. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but here is Alex. Great, thanks Sally. Hi everyone, good evening. and. Welcome to at least the floor below the PAR Center, but welcome to the building. We're super excited to have you all and, and to see you. And, and again, we we hope to, to register your interest in, in the cool work that we're doing. 
Um, as Sarah mentioned, the, the PAR Center has a, a very student focused mission. So we have uh, like the, the sort of central mission of the PAR Center is, is educational and that has a central focus on campus and beyond. And I uh, am the director of the beyond part or at least part of it um, in the National High School Ethics Bowl, um, which is a program that was started at the PAR Center in 2012. Um, so it's been around for a little while now, almost 10 years. Um, and it is designed to get students around the country. We, at last count, we serve just under 4,000 of them in public and private high schools in 32 states, thinking, talking, and working together about those tough and thorny ethical issues that have come to kind of define our lives um, as individuals, as members of communities, and as, as members of a of a democratic society where disagreement is the norm. I suspect that you are also interested in those things if, if you're in this room uh, or listening to this call. Um, so I, I, I wanna say a little bit about the, the National High School Ethics Bowl as an opportunity for undergraduates in particular. Um, so the, the PAR Center, as I said, is kind of the home and headquarters of this big program that affects the lives of thousands of high school students every year. Um, and as Sarah also gestured, um, the, the undergraduate students at the PAR Center are, are essentially what makes men, many of our programs tick. And the National High School Ethics Bowl is, is no exception. So as you'll hear from Sally in a few minutes, um, each of our programs, the recruits program, the fellows program, and the scholars program um, integrates in interesting ways with the high school ethics bowl, um, ranging from um, volunteering as moderators and staffers at our events um, to um, actually taking a course uh, which integrates with the National High School Ethics Bowl. So one of the courses that you can take in, in our, um, our sort of course of study for the scholars program uh, is the course that Michael teaches this semester, um, which actually has UNC students out in the community across the country coaching uh, high school ethics bowl teams who are brand new to, to our activity. So the impact of this thing and its reach is, is really something special to us at the PAR Center. And um, you know, if you're interested in these questions and if you're interested in um, you know, engaging high school students in, in a way that honestly is quite unique compared to what most of them are exposed to every day, um, then I hope this is the place for you. And I, I hope the, the National High School Ethics Bowl is the project for you. Um, but with, you know, in lieu of saying more, I'll, I'll drop a link to NHSEB's website in the chat. Um, and I can also, um, I guess for those of you in the room, Sally could like write it on the board or something, perhaps. Um, I can't control everything, um, but I, uh, I I hope to hear from you. And, and as always, we hope you'll visit the center and look forward to seeing you. So thanks, everybody. Great, thank you so much, Alex. Um, so next, Michael's going to come back up and put on his other hat um, as our outreach director. Okay, so hello again. Um, I'll keep it relatively short and sweet since you've heard a little bit now about um, ways I'm involved. So I direct the outreach program. It's shared by the philosophy department and the PAR Center for Ethics. Um, and we really embody the kind of public facing mission, not only of the PAR Center, but of the university of the nation's first and largest public, not largest, first public university. Um, so we take that charge quite seriously. One way to think about the point of being at a university where knowledge is being produced and really exciting ideas are being hashed out in the classroom uh, is that it ought to in some way kind of redound to the benefit of the community more generally um, if universities are supposed to be as we are a public good. So we're engaged in outreach of all kinds. We reach folks across the lifespan, as some put it, from cradle to grave. We work with kindergartners, we work with retirement communities in the Triangle area work with professionals in the workplace, uh, K to 12 schools, teachers, libraries, you name it. If there's a community space for either trying to get there, we are there, uh, or we've been there in the past. So um, the basic idea is we think philosophy is something really good. If you have something really good, uh, you ought to share it. And the idea is that we share it with the community, we invite others to kind of think about those questions that I told you a little bit about. Um, Alex mentioned, you know, one opportunity is curricular, get involved, you can take Phil 292, Phil 261, you can take various kind of community engaged, community facing courses, uh, that's all broadly uh, kind of public facing in the, in the way we've been discussing. 
Um, and yeah, I'll leave it at that. There's always chances to get involved for undergraduates. I'm always super excited. If you want to reach the community, I'm happy to facilitate it, to work with off-campus partners, to work with other units on campus, to make it happen and to bring the program into existence. So I look forward to potentially working with you all and thanks for your time. In here, pause. <laughs> so thank you. All right, so we have two more wonderful colleagues to hear from. Um, next is Jordan. She's our event coordinator. She's going to talk a little bit about um, some of the events that Professor Stroud touched on a moment ago. Hi, everyone. Um, it's great to uh, see the people in the Zoom call and also to know that there are people in the room. Um, thanks for coming. Uh, so yeah, like Sally said, my name is Jordan. I'm the event coordinator for the PAR Center um, and the philosophy department as a whole. Um, yeah, and I was gonna talk to you about the speaker series, which Sarah touched on a little bit. She gave you kind of an overview about that. Um, so I'll just let you know that this semester we have three of these events coming up. Um, the first one will be with Krista Thomason from Swarthmore College and the National Humanities Center. Um, and she'll be speaking on contempt and its place in public life. That's on uh, September 29th. Um, the next one is on November 2nd. That's Ian Leahy. He is the vice president of urban forestry at American Forests um, and he'll be speaking on tree equity. Um, and the last one that we have this semester will be on November 22nd, and that's with Alvaro Bedoya um, from Georgetown, and he'll be speaking on government surveillance activities um, and capabilities. So um, those are all really cool. You know, the fields of work are all across the board, um, and we have um, at least a handful more that we have in the works for the spring. Um, so for the events in the fall and the events in the spring, um, just keep an eye on our website and our social media accounts where we'll publicize these talks um, in more detail once we have um, some more things to tell you about. Um, yeah, so that's about all I've got to share. And um, we're really excited that you're all interested in the PAR Center. And um, we hope to see you at some of those public events or um, just around the office. And last but certainly not least, um, we have Delaney Thal. She is our um, research assistant for this year, and she's going to talk about some of her work. Awesome. Hi, I'm Delaney. It's great to meet you. I'm a philosophy grad student um, working on an ethics dissertation. Um, this semester, I'm teaching Phil 261, which is one of our um, PAR Center affiliated undergraduate courses. And so the students in that class are going to be the college level ethics bowl team that represents Carolina um, at those competitions, which is exciting. It's good to see some of you here. Um, the other thing I work on, are any of you grad students? Amazing. Well, we have a grad student affiliation program, <laughs> so y'all will meet them at these kind of events, um, which I think is kind of a unique way for undergrads and grad students to mix outside of classrooms. Um, and so that's cool. So they they do similar outreach stuff um, and work with the National High School Ethics Bowl um, and then do other kind of community building work around ethics. Um, but it's great to meet all of you um, and I'm glad you're here. Great, so you've heard from all of us. Um, and now I'm gonna move into talking about the programs that we're gonna offer this year. Um, so if you'll give me a second to share the screen and everything. I will remember how to do it. Everyone in here can see it. Everyone on Zoom, good. Okay, cool. Let us. All right, so we've got a par heel. What is a par heel? Um, we are the par center for ethics. You are tar heels. Mix them together. It's a really great pun, <laughs> and um, it's a great way to get involved. So. Oops. Um, so if you want to explore, research, and excel in ethics, then you're in the right place. Um, you'll notice that each one of these um, words are in different colors, and they are about our different programs. So we have three programs that I'm going to talk to you about um, tonight, um, and they range from less intensive, like time commitment and knowledge about ethics coming in, all the way to you know the transcript designation that. Professor Shroud talked about, and that's more like you've done a lot of ethics 
and you've committed a lot of time. So we have a wide range of uh, programs. So first, explore. Um, this is our newest program. So we're really excited about this. Uh, it's called the Ethics Recruit. And you might have seen this on our website or just out and about. So Ethics Recruits, these are going to be students who are either new to ethics, maybe you haven't studied it formally before, maybe you just aren't quite as confident in your knowledge of ethics, because I bet you have engaged with ethics before, but maybe you just feel a little fresher to the field of ethics. Also, this program is for students who, I want to do ethics, but I don't want to like invest all my time. I don't want this to be like my thing that I do after class. Um, so this is the more laid back, um, less time intensive option. So what's going to happen with ethics recruits? Um, I have six points on this slide, and um, these are all different things that ethics recruits do and are requirements in some sense. And I'll go into a little bit more detail about them. Um, so the first one, learn from ethicists at the Parson or Lecture Series. So you all have all heard about you know, our great events this uh, coming semester. We ask that our ethics recruits come to at least one of those um, to learn from the world-renowned ethicists that we're bringing in. Um, and we'll have more in the spring. So asking that y'all would come to one of those. Number two is interacting with UNC ethics researchers at Park Hill Talks. So I'll talk about the second level, the ethics fellows in a second, but this is going to be twice a month, an evening meeting with ethics recruits and ethics fellows. And I'm gonna invite in um, a scholar from UNC who is researching ethics. And they're gonna talk um, directly to y'all, have a student focused talk about their current research. Um, it's also a space for our ethics fellows to talk about the projects they're working on and get feedback and all of us to come together and learn about ethics in a more hands-on way. So that's the Park Hill Talks that will happen twice a month in the evening. And a common question I get is like, what, what is it? Um, I take the availability of all the people who are involved and we find the best time. So I can't tell you now it's gonna be X night at whatever time. Um, but we'll decide that together. So that's the second way that our ethics recruits um, really are engaging with ethics. Um, third one, Parson or social events are pretty fun. Um, so we have a few social events every year. Actually, we have quite a few, but there are only four that I would say are required or highly encouraged. Um, that is for the fellows, an induction ceremony. Um, so our fellows will be inducted into the program. We're gonna have an ethics recruit signing day, which will be kind of an analog to that, which we'll have you all come to. Um, the second part um, is at the end of the semester, we'll have, you know, it's around Thanksgiving time, we'll have a group meal of some sort um, where we just come together and have some delicious food that we order for y'all. And then in the spring, um, Delaney touched on this a little bit, we have a mixer with the grad fellows. It's usually trivia um, about car center because we're nerds, um, but you get to meet and talk with grad fellows um, at that. And then the final thing, final social event, at the end of the year, we have a celebration slash poster show. So we send off our seniors, we thank them for their time with us, and then each group um, within the ethics fellows, and I'll get into more of this in a second, um, they have posters where they present what they've worked on all year. So it's a great way to really end the year on a high note, see what all we've done, and you know, get ready for the summer. So those are the social events. Um, you heard about the National High School Ethics Poll from Alex. So we expect our students to help. So our ethics recruits will be more um, watching and taking notes and helping room staff these events. Um, so getting a chance to help out with the regional, the North Carolina regional, and then the national competitions. Um, and we've had those both in person in the past and then last year virtually. Um, so we will have that this year as well. Fifth one, um, I've been talking about these projects that the ethics fellows work on. We want our recruits to be on those projects in some form as well. So helping out, um, kind of shadowing and seeing what these projects are, lending a helping hand, 
um, and that kind of stuff. And then finally, you have access to the Parsoner Ethics Scholar Program. So if you start with the recruits, you can start going through some of the requirements and checking those off. Um, and I'll talk about those in a moment. So this is our newest program. Again, the more laid back feel um, for the ethics recruits. Uh, the next one, this is really the, the core of our programming. This is kind of where it all started. Um, this is our oldest program for sure. Um, and it's the ethics fellow. So I will talk a little bit about it. And then we actually have some students who will share with you their experiences and what they're doing this year. But ethics fellows, we're gonna have 50 students who are working together on team projects. There are about, how many are up there? Seven projects this year. Get into groups and you're gonna work all year on this project that you self-design and implement. And again, we'll let some of our people talk about it in a moment. Um, so that's the core function of being a fellow is this group project that you're doing. It can either be research-based or more program-focused. Um, and yeah, I will go ahead and let people who work on it talk about it. So Jennifer and Brennan are fellows and they're gonna talk about what they're working on this year. Okay. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi everyone, um, I'm Jennifer and I am one of the uh, co-execs, my name sitting over there, Noah, um, for the National High School Ethics Bowl. And this is my second year in the program. Um, yeah, so you wanna? Yeah, hi, I'm Brennan. Um, this is also my second year in the program and I'm a co-exec with Campbell over here on the podcast. Cool, so I guess I'll just talk a little bit about um, the National High School Ethics Well, I know you guys have already heard a ton about it, but just from a student uh, student's perspective, how we are involved in what we do in this program. So the pod that I am in, um, we work a whole lot with directly with the high school students and with Alex and Sally both very directly. Um, so we're involved this year, we're focusing on content creation for high school students around the country, which is super exciting, making some videos for them. Um, we're also always involved in case writing. So the actual ethical dialogues that students are having, um, we are part of the team that sort of creates and forms what those case, cases are gonna look like. Um, and then some other things we're getting into this year is just moderating and coaching teams, high school teams around the country, um, which is always super exciting and a big part of what we do working with the high school students. Yeah, and so for the podcast, it's a bit different from a lot of the other things that go on in the PAR Center. Um, so basically we um, work as a team to both um, creatively like come up with ideas and conceptualize ideas for the Chapel Hill podcast. By the way, you can find it wherever your podcasts are. Please check it out. Let's do it. Okay. Um, but yeah, and so we um, have come up with our own episode ideas. We research them. We talk about them within our groups and then we record them. So these have been interviews with different um, ethics like professors, um, different professors that are not even really involved in like the philosophy programs, but you know, do business and just like policy, tons of different things because ethics isn't everything. Um, and so we get to talk to them about you know what they're doing, their thoughts on different questions that we have. We have also done our own research and done our own episodes on things that um, interest us. Um, I mostly worked on a series called What Should You Do last year, where basically we take like different um, kind of like some kind of random like zombie apocalypse and some kind of like very applicable things um, in life and just ask like what should we do from an ethical standpoint and we ask different professors about it and then um, talk about like our views on that so basically whatever we want <laughs> to talk about we talk about on this podcast um, and we can it's a great way to both like learn and talk amongst ourselves as well as share our ideas with the community um, and it's just a really fun thing to do. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a little bit about what I've done, um, but there are tons of different things that you can do. Um, and I would highly recommend going to our website and just checking it all out. Um, there are a couple of new pods this semester, like environmental ethics and partisan ethics, um, that talk about things that we really haven't like 
fully dug into. Um, and so you can be a part of like creating that conversation and facilitating it. So, yeah. <laughs> so you have probably heard some words that um, I haven't said. So pods equals team, co-exec. Um, so each team pod has two members who are leading it. Um, so you're not just, you know, a bunch of students going out in different directions. So we have students leading these. Um, and just like Brennan and Jennifer beautifully said, these are projects that students design. These are projects where you study and do what you're interested in. I'm not here telling you like, do this, this, and this, you know, Professor Stroud's not telling us, you know, what to do. I mean, we have limits, <laughs> but um, it's student focus, student design, student implemented. I'm just here to make sure y'all get that access to the resources y'all need. Um, I'm happy to help brainstorm and stuff like that. So some of the projects we haven't talked about, I won't go in a lot of detail, but um, you'll see we have a Park Hill blog, writing blog posts. Um, you can go online and find those students, come up with those and research those topics themselves. Um, we also have the Bioethics Society, which some of you might be familiar with. It's new this year. That's a UNC student organization led by some of our, our students here. They wanted to do that. They implemented it. If you have an interest, is what I'm saying, we, we can do that. Um, it's the students program. Um, so that is about the ethics fellow. Again, project focused, research focused. There are other requirements, much like the ones I talked about on the last slide with the recruits coming to those events, the social events and that kind of stuff. But the main thing, the students are spending about one hour a week working on their project and then 30 minutes to an hour additional um, meeting with their team, their pod to talk about progress. So the time commitment weekly is two hours and it's designed to be pretty low <laughs> in comparison to um, other organizations and stuff you might get into. Um, so that's about the ethics fellows. Like I said, we have some students here in person and on the Zoom call that can answer your questions better than I can. So I'm going to go ahead and move to our last program, um, which is the Ethics Scholar. This is where you excel in ethics. So um, like I said, we're progressing to most time intensive. You know, you know the most about ethics. You've learned the most. This is it. This is the top. Um, like Professor Stroud said, this is our second year of it. We're really super duper proud. Um, if you know the Buckley Service Scholars uh, designation, this is very, very much like that. So what this is, is you complete a bunch of requirements, which I'll go over in a second, and then UNC takes their official stamp and on your transcript, they say ethics scholar. So anywhere you apply, job, grad school, whatever, that comes with you. Um, so we want the work that students are doing to be recognized, not just at UNC, but beyond. So to get the Ethics Scholar designation, two years as a fellow, so the whole program I just talked about, that's the largest chunk of the scholar. You have to do that for two years. That's because there's so much involved in all the digging through the topics and figuring out what you like, and what you wanna write or talk or research about. So that's the largest part, being a fellow for two years. Um, the other large part, which is why it goes on your transcript, is the two courses in ethics. So that breaks down where you take one course, which is a general course in ethics. We have a list online of all the courses we have approved for that. We're always adding more. Um, you can find that on our website. For those of you who are like intro to, bio, intro to ethics, intro to bioethics, um, and then courses across the university. The second course that you have to take is a capstone of some sort. Um, so you can do that by taking some of the classes that Michael and Delaney talked about. So the College Ethics Bowl, the outreach, those are the most straightforward ways to get that capstone um, completed. Other ways that students have done it in the past, if you're doing an independent study or an honors thesis that is 
sufficiently concerned with ethics. Um, you know, we have to check it all out and make sure, but then that can count as your capstone as well. So again, two courses in ethics, think a general one and then a capstone, and that happens at the end because um, this is a multi-year process. The other two um, requirements are a little bit easier to cross off. So one skills training course. So if you're familiar with safe zone, um, green zone, one act, Haven, Undocu Carolina, those like two to six hour training sessions put on by other organizations at UNC. Those are ways that you become a leader in our eyes and ways that you can take the ethical research knowledge that you're gaining and really implement it in um, pretty great ways. So we ask that all of our students take at least one skills training course at some point in their undergrad career. The last one, reflection and presentation. So like I said earlier, we have an end of the year um, poster show. You take your capstone, you present it. We all make really big, pretty posters, which we'll help you out with. You present on that um, at the poster show, and then you write a reflection afterwards. Um, that's about three to four pages, double spaced, I'd say. So it's not too long. We're just recounting, you know, how this program has affected you and what you hope to do with it in the future. So that's a breakdown of how to become an ethics scholar. Again, very intensive um, and very rewarding. Um, I have testimonies that you can, you can talk about later, but our students who did it last year, our first cohort really, really enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, that is the ethics scholar. So to recap, ethics recruit, ethics fellow, and ethics scholar. So those are our programs. Um, as you'll notice kind of in how I talked about it, the first two, the recruit and the fellow, you have to apply for. It's a yearly thing. Um, you sign up. The recruit is rolling admission. Um, there's no cap on how many people can be an ethics recruit. So if you want to get involved, please just get involved. Um, the ethics fellow, you apply for that. Then there's an interview process because, again, it is more hands-on and it's more in-depth. Um, and that application is closing, I believe, this Sunday at midnight. Um, so make sure you get your application in for that. You can find all of these on our website. Um, and yeah, that's a bit about us. I'm here to answer any questions you might have. And again, we have students here as well. And we ended pretty early. So if you want to skedaddle, you can do that too. Um, but thank you. For